Thank you, Father Ken, for allowing me this opportunity to share my reflection today. There is a popular saying in the Christian community. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. If ever there was a perfect example of this playing out in real life, it is happening right here, right now, as I certainly do not feel qualified to be here in any way, shape, or form. And I think that most people who know me would probably agree. However, while I surely do not feel qualified, I am most definitely called. And like Peter in today's gospel reading, I'm going to take that first step of faith out of the proverbial boat, and I'll attempt to walk over the treacherous seas of fear and self-doubt. And should I falter? Should I sink? I only ask that you catch me and forgive me. Our good friend and former pastor, the late father Matthew Valanco, may he rest in peace, would often begin his homilies with a joke. So today I am going to do the same with my reflection. Now this joke was actually written by Father Matt himself as I pulled it from his book, From Humor to Inspiration. I'd like for you to imagine Father Matt telling it as his delivery of these kinds of jokes is clearly better than mine. It is called Crossing the Sea of Galilee. An American planning a trip to the Holy Land was aghast when he found it would cost $100 an hour to rent a boat on the Sea of Galilee. He said, in America, it wouldn't be more than 50 bucks. That might be true, said the travel agent, but you have to take into account that the Sea of Galilee is water on which our Lord himself walked. To which the American replied, well, at $100 an hour for a boat, it's no wonder he walked. Today's Gospel reading is one of my very favorite passages in the Bible. There are so many rich themes running and intermingling throughout. Faith, doubt, trust, fear, courage, love. And of course it details the extremely powerful and beautiful moment of Jesus walking on water. During the Lenten season last year in 2019, I was fortunate to have been able to take part in a pilgrimage to the Holy Land led by our very own Father Kent, along with some friends and fellow parishioners. And during this pilgrimage, we visited the area where Jesus fed the multitudes, and then we proceeded to take a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. This is truly a moment that will forever be etched into my heart. It was a beautiful day, and as we traveled along the water, we prayed together as a group. And Father Ken read the exact passage from Matthew's Gospel that we just heard proclaimed a moment ago. It was quite a surreal experience to actually be there in the exact place where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walked on water. And to hear the story again in that very place gave me goosebumps. I remember being particularly in awe and truly humbled as I prayed and listened to this Gospel reading hearing the waters of Galilee gently lapping up against our boat, a ray of sunshine piercing through the smattering of clouds. Throughout all of this, picturing Jesus walking on these very waters, I kept thinking to myself, wow, I can't believe that I'm here. However, I must say that I also have a confession to make. In that very same moment, I also remember wondering to myself, did this actually happen? Come on, for real. Like, for real, for real? Like Peter, my faith is tested. It is continually and incessantly tested, challenged at every turn. Fear and doubt are indeed powerful enemies of faith and trust. When the disciples first see Jesus walking on the sea, they are absolutely terrified. The scripture tells us that this occurred during the fourth watch of the night. Now the fourth watch is sometime around three to 5 a.m. So it's extremely dark. The apostles are weary and tired 
from a long, harsh trip over rough waters in the middle of the night. And when faced with the sight of Jesus walking on water, they are panic-stricken. Their first thought is that this was a ghost, an apparition. They believe that what they were seeing was nothing more than a spirit. When it was Jesus, flesh and blood, physically present, approaching them in an unbelievably miraculous way. He was going to them not just spiritually, but physically. And in the same way, he calls us, not only spiritually, but to physically take action, i.e. stepping out of our boats, out of our comfort zones. Just the very day before, they had witnessed Jesus perform a miracle feeding the multitudes with only five loaves and two fishes, and yet now they believe that they are seeing a ghost? How many times in our lives is Jesus coming to us, approaching us? And perhaps we don't recognize him, or mistakenly attribute his presence as something else. Luck? Fate? Coincidence? When has Jesus been present to us, and we look the other way? either out of fear or worse, apathy? What can we do to grow our personal relationship with Jesus Christ so that we may always recognize him? And what changes can we make in our lives to fully trust him? When my son DeMarco was a toddler, he loved swimming. And by far, his most favorite thing to do at the swimming pool was to jump off the edge of the pool and into my arms, into the water. This is a scenario that plays out millions of times in swimming pools all over the world. A very young child standing on the edge of a swimming pool with a parent inside the pool with outstretched arms encouraging the child to jump. Now in DeMarco's case, he had no fear. He had 100% trust that I would catch him and that he would be fine. He would focus on me and jump right into my arms. As soon as he came back up out of the water, he'd say, Daddy, Daddy, again, again. The pure joy that he felt each time he jumped completely erased any fear that the water might have engendered in him. God is calling us to focus on him and jump into his arms. He promises us that he has us. Do we 100% believe him? And are we willing to abandon all fear in the same way that DeMarco did? and take that same leap of faith into the arms of our Father? There is one reason that we are fearful of anything that scares us. We are afraid that we will be hurt. How many times do we let fear dissuade us from pursuing something that we want, something that we know will bring us great joy? How often do we let fear force us into taking the easy way out? Do we let fear harm our relationship with God? scare us from pursuing him, lead us into making bad decisions? Jesus says to his disciples, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. At which point, Peter asked Jesus that if it is indeed him, to command him to go to Jesus on the water, and Jesus replies, come. Upon being summoned, Peter, ever full of embattled enthusiasm, in his yearning to be with Jesus, gets out of the boat and begins walking on the Sea of Galilee. His love of Christ compels him to set foot on the turbulent, choppy waters and begin to traverse it on foot, eyes fixated on Jesus. After a few steps, though, what happens? Doubt creeps in. Fear rears its ugly head. Where his eyes and heart were completely focused on Jesus just a few seconds ago, his faith strong that God would allow him to walk on water, he suddenly lets his fearsome surroundings cause him to doubt and lose focus on his goal of joining Christ. Peter's faith was strong. He was called by Jesus and he responded to the call. His faith allowed him to walk on a divine plane just like Jesus. Had he not given in to doubt and fear, had he instead kept his focus on Christ, he would have made it all the way to Jesus and would not have sunk and have needed to have been saved. It's the same for us. 
we need to keep our focus on Christ. God can calm the storm, and he can also calm you in the midst of that storm. Do we trust him to do that? When we doubt, when we lack in trust in God, what we are really doing is showing that we don't fully believe that God is going to do what he says he is going to do. Sometimes we are very focused on Jesus, and our faith is strong at church or at church-related activities. But when we are outside of this comfort zone, outside of our boat, perhaps our faith is being questioned, or we are faced with health or financial challenges, or the prospect of losing our jobs. We lose that focus. We must ask ourselves, do I compartmentalize my faith? It's easy to be in lockstep with God while we are here at church. But do we let our trust in God permeate all areas of our life? Are we able to let go and let God? Sometimes we try to control everything and we end up making things worse. As a good friend of mine recently reminded me, do your best and God will do the rest. Now Jesus tells Peter, come. Each one of us is called upon by Jesus to grow spiritually and to increase our faith and trust in God, to walk toward him on our faith journey, regardless of the winds of doubt and fear. We are called to step out of the boat, out of our comfort zones. We are called to walk straight to Jesus. Obstacles get in the way. They test our faith. They test our personal relationship with Jesus especially now with all the difficult times we're going through. But can we persevere? The more difficult the choice, the greater the obstacles, the more perseverance that's required, the closer to God we will be. There is a saying, faith is nothing more than a concept until you have to use it. I like to think of faith as a muscle. What happens to muscles if we don't work them out regularly? If we don't feed them proper nutrition? They turn soft and flabby, and they will not be strong when we truly need them to be. We need to exercise our faith, take it to the gym. We must work on all of our faith muscles. We must be intentional in praying to God to increase our faith. We must make a better effort in helping our neighbor, befriending the stranger, fighting against the sins of envy, greed, pride, racism, classism, division, and exclusivity. The weights can't help us if we leave them on the rack. Sometimes the weights are heavy. Sometimes we are tired and weary, and we just plain don't feel like it. No excuses. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Walk to him. He is calling you. He is calling me. He tells us, come.